Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Shaw. I'm Dr. Maxfield. Welcome back to our channel, Doctorly. Today, we're gonna to be talking about malassezia folliculitis versus just regular acne. I've been getting a lot of questions about fungal acne from people. Uh, fungal acne, also known as malassezia folliculitis. Uh, we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna talk about what causes it, we're gonna talk about how it presents, we're gonna talk about how to treat it, uh, and then we're also gonna compare it to comedonal acne, which is much more common than malassezia folliculitis. Here we go. Here we go. Fungal acne, malassezia folliculitis, pittersporum folliculitis. What's malassezia? So malassezia is a very common dimorphic yeast organism that lives on our skin. If you, if I were to scrape your skin right now and look at it under the microscope, which we do in dermatology all the time, uh, we take a little blade, uh, we scrape the surface of the skin, we put it on the slide, we look at it under the microscope, and we can see what's, what's on that slide. And when we look at that, a lot of times we see this organism called malassezia furfur or malassezia globosa or... Pittosporum ovale. Pittosporum ovale. These things have multiple different names, uh, but at the end of the day, it's a little yeast organism that lives on it most people's skin. You have yeast growing on you, fungus growing on you, bacteria growing on you, bacteria growing in you, candida growing in you. We're not as pristine as we like to think. Right, and it's, it's healthy to have these organisms on our body. They keep other organisms from um, growing too much. You know, they, it's, it, it creates this sort of symbiotic environment. So basically these, these organisms, they live on our skin and um, it's normal to have these and in most people, it causes no problems at all. It lives there, it lives there happily, and it doesn't cause any issues. However, in some people, it can manifest in different types of skin conditions. So Dr. Maxfield, what skin conditions, other than fungal acne or malassezia folliculitis, can be caused by this organism? Super common things. Uh, seborrheic dermatitis, this yeast has been implicated in at least exacerbating it, making it more prevalent. So seborrheic dermatitis is basically like dandruff, plus a little bit more. And then also tinea versicolor, which well, a lot of people are familiar with. This is where you get this little slightly scaly. Dispigmentation can be lighter, darker. On the trunk, most people notice it in the summer. Those are probably by far the two most common things. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot more uncommon entities that it's involved with as well. Absolutely. So it, it can manifest in, in multiple different forms of diseases in some people. Some people it causes no problems at all. So I have been getting a lot of questions about how to treat fungal acne. So the question that comes to me is, I have fungal acne, how do you treat it? Well, the first question is, do you have fungal acne? And I'm referring to fungal as fungal acne going forward from here, just because um, I think that that's what mo most people refer to it as. Um, but if you wanna look it up in the literature, uh, look up either pittersporum folliculitis or malassezia folliculitis, but we'll refer to it as fungal acne going forward. So I get this question a lot, uh, how do I treat it? The question is, do you have it? So in medicine, we have this saying, right? Famous saying. So uh, if you know this saying and you know a doctor, uh, they're gonna be really impressed if you know this. So when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. What does that mean? Horses are much more common than zebras, right? If you heard, if you saw something that looked like a horse, you would immediately assume it was a horse, not a zebra, right? Because there are not really a lot of zebras, especially in the United States, unless you're at a zoo or something, right? Yeah. So when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. When you see bumps on the skin that look like acne, think acne, not fungal acne. Uh, fungal acne is much less common, just like zebras are. Uh, so just to put that in perspective, it is far, far, far more common to have regular acne than it is to have fungal acne. So what does fungal acne look like or present as? Classically, it's described in all the studies as what we call monomorphic pink papules. What does that mean? It's just a fancy way of saying little bumps on the skin that all look the same. Monomorphic means that they have the same features in all of the bumps. Regular acne may have bumps of all different sizes. One might be a pustule, it has a little pus in it. Some might be flat, flat open comedone. Blackheads. Uh, blackheads, or a closed comedone a whitehead. That's what regular acne can look like, but in, in our experience, I would say that uh, fungal acne is more, the bumps all look the same. Um, they're usually a little bit red, 
Um, and they did do a study that showed that for fungal acne, most cases, uh, the patients were itchy. Uh, the bumps were itchy versus regular acne, which is usually not itchy. It actually can be painful, especially if you have nodular cystic acne. Yeah, no, it's a key distinguishing point. Uh, other things that are more unique to fungal acne, it tends to spare the central face. Actually, it's more common on the upper trunk. Uh, and this has, has to do with some of the locations of our oil glands. Uh, and then also hot, humid environments that kind of perpetuate um, the occlusion and the oil production. So distribution, slightly different. Uh, distribution meaning where it is on the body, slightly different than it is from regular acne. Appearance, slightly different uh, than regular acne. And characteristic being itchy, slightly different than regular acne. Um, so if you know you have those features, the other thing that can kind of lead you towards fungal acne is if you've been treating acne for a long period of time and it either is flaring or just not getting better, uh, what would you consider uh, a time period where you are treating your acne and it's not getting better? And so that's a great point. Uh, when you're starting an acne treatment, you need to understand that it's going to take a period of months for the topical treatment, oral treatment that you're using to really have an effect in impacting your glands uh, and your skin. So if you're taking medication topically orally and you're not seeing any improvement in a couple of weeks, it doesn't mean it's not acne. If you're seeing worsening over a period of months, uh, then it's definitely time to reconsider or rethink your approach. I think the other thing with acne is that you have to consider whether you're actually treating your acne properly. Um, I get a lot of, you know, pictures of people that say, they send me a picture of their skin and they say, you know, how can I treat this acne? They have what I would categorize as moderate to severe acne um, or nodular acne. And that type of acne is not going to get better with topical over-the-counter medication. So it doesn't become fungal acne because of that. It just means that you need a different medication that's going to actually treat that from the inside. And that's usually going to require something like oral antibiotics. Um, or oral vitamin A derivatives like Accutane or isotretinoin. So these types of acne are not usually responsive to over-the-counter medications. And so if you're not having response, that also doesn't mean that you, don't, you have fungal acne. It may mean that you're not treating it appropriately. Another thing that I notice is a lot of people have a skincare regimen for acne that doesn't have any active ingredients against acne. They have what I consider to be active ingredient adjuncts something like niacinamide, alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid or lactic acid. These are not acne treatments. Your main acne treatments are gonna be benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, and retinoids. Uh, if you don't have one of those three, uh, you're probably not treating your acne appropriately. Okay, so now we've given our acne like a reasonable try. We've tried something. We've tried something for a period of a couple months, not getting any better or we have a new eruption where all the bumps are starting to look the same. So if you're talking to a dermatologist or if you're considering if you have this, you know, we may suspect it based off of what we're seeing. And then as Dr. Shaw alluded to, in the office we can scrape it and then identify, visualize the yeasts on the skin by adding a little potassium hydroxide to the slide. Uh, and that really kind of solidifies what we already suspected clinically. And once we've done that, we can kind of move on to some of the treatments. So once we've made the diagnosis, which I think fungal acne is uncommon enough that you should probably let your doctor make that diagnosis. Um, I'm of course all about empowering you all to treat your skin conditions at home um, safely. You know, that's my main goal. You know, I'm pretty much tell you everything I know. So far as treatment, um, there was a good study that showed um, that you could use this topical ketoconazole shampoo. Uh, 2% is what they used in the study, which is a uh, prescription dose. Um, but, you know, 1% over-the-counter um, ketoconazole shampoo, uh, which is sold as an Izerol, uh, probably is going to be effective against it as well. Um, but, you know, because it's concentrated in the hair follicle, a lot of times, you know, these topical medications are not going to get really great penetration to that area. And so, usually in the office, uh, we treat it with oral antifungal medications, like fluconazole. Ketoconazole shampoo over the counter is a good first attempt, um, but a lot of times you may need an oral medication, especially if it's really widespread. Uh, like we said, most people don't just have it isolated to their face. Uh, most of the time it's going to involve their upper back or upper chest. Uh, so especially when it's widespread like that, um, it's most appropriate to use something oral or systemic just because it's very difficult to treat a wide area like that with topical medications. Yeah, and then after the oral therapy, uh, you know, most people can back down and then use topicals 
kind of consistently as maintenance. And why do you need maintenance? It's because it's everywhere. The yeast is on him, it's on me, it's on you. If you're someone who malassezia has been a problem for in the past, you may need to do something to kind of keep it at bay. But then also don't forget to treat your acne on top of it. So a lot of people, and actually there's a nice paper uh, in the JAMA Pediatrics Journal, just a little series about uh, six adolescents who had acne, they were on treatment, and then it changed a little bit. It became consistent with malassezia folliculitis. They treated the malassezia folliculitis, and then they had to go back to treating the acne because the patient still had acne. So don't be surprised if you have both. So don't neglect the acne. So in nature, if you have a bunch of plants um, and you, know, you kill uh, one population of plants, it's gonna allow all the other plants to start to overgrow, right? So if you're treating regular acne with antibiotics for a long period of time, now you don't have these bacteria on your skin that are keeping this fungus on your skin in check. It allows that fungus to proliferate and uh, create skin conditions. And so uh, if you're on antibiotics for a long time, this is the same reason why people get yeast infections um, in the anogenital area, because uh, when they're on antibiotics, it allows uh, the yeast organisms uh, that are not being targeted by this antibiotic to start to proliferate. And so uh, the same thing sort of happens. If you're on antibiotics for a long period of time, you may develop uh, malassezia folliculitis. Can you develop gram-negative folliculitis, another non-acne folliculitis? Also, gram-negative folliculitis would need to be treated with oral medications pretty aggressively. So it's important to note um, that you don't have malassezia folliculitis, but you may in fact actually have gram-negative folliculitis, which is a much more aggressive uh, form of uh, bumps on your skin. Ooh, aggressive bumps on the skin. So yeah, these are a the little bit of the differences um, between malassezia folliculitis or fungal acne and comedonal acne or regular acne. Hopefully this can guide you uh, with how to treat yours uh, going forward. And if you have any questions, please see a board certified dermatologist. Uh, we would be glad to discuss this with you. Um, if you're in doubt, if you had to choose, if I didn't see you and you didn't send me a picture and you said, I have bumps on my skin, what is it? Common things being common, it's regular acne. Hiram, uh, which you all know as Skincare by Hiram on YouTube, he did a video on fungal acne or malassezia folliculitis. He does a really good job going over you know, what it looks like and how to treat it. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, uh, please go watch that after this video. He, he does a really good job and he does research on, on the topic as well. So thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, hopefully this helps guide you in the treatment for uh, your skin conditions. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them uh, when I get a chance.